Do you know how to read and draw this UML diagram? In the first draw, we label the class name at the top. If it's an interface or abstract, we add two angle bracket to label it. Next, we group the class field in the second row and method or function in the third row. If it's a public, it's positive sign. But remember, excluding method or function, for class field, our coding standards say we cannot use public, yeah? The another two symbol that you will use is either negative sign for private or hash sign for protected. As you can see, this is the format with the name and then followed by colon, then the data type. Underline if it's static and make it italic if it's abstract. The first thing I want to introduce to you is inheritance. When you see this symbol, right, it's an empty triangle. When you see this symbol, you automatically know already, okay, this is called as inheritance. The inheritance also known as is a, is a. Okay, let's look at this example. Huh? A car is a vehicle, okay? A car is a vehicle. A tank is also a vehicle. You know what is a tank? Tank is a, you know, the military thing, tank, tank. Huh? A tank is a vehicle also, okay? So if you look at this if the arrow is pointing this direction the get pointed one okay the get pointed one is the parent okay this is the parent okay this is also known as the super class huh? you can call it as super class you can call it as parent also and this one right this one is the subclass okay this is called as the subclass or you can call it as child okay the child this child will inherit okay this child raw would inherit the parent no? okay child inherit the parent so whatever the parent property got the child will inherit it no? okay will inherit it okay if you open the vehicle class right okay you can see the material is iron okay the material is iron okay so you know uh, the car body right is built using iron okay and you see the tank body is also built using iron also okay this is what I mean, okay? This is what I mean. Then we got a class view, okay? This class view, or example, uh, I got public static boolean drivable. Whether the vehicle can be drivable or not, the child would also have the boolean also. The tank, right, also got this boolean also, okay? Because in the car, right, the car would inherit the parent ma. We got a default constructor in the parent now, okay? We got alternate constructor in the parent also, okay? So as you can see, oh, my vehicle class is a parent or super class, okay? Usually, la, okay, usually we declare it as abstract, okay? We add the keyword abstract. If you don't want to use abstract class, then you use an interface. But you haven't learned interface yet, la, okay? I just roughly tell you, only, uh, you can inherit multiple interface, but you can inherit one abstract class only. If you are using abstract class, right, you can declare non-static class field. However, if I change this from abstract class become interface, right, you can only use a static class field only. The interface needs to be very clean, okay? You can only provide the method signature, okay? What do we mean by method signature? Method signature means you cannot write a code inside, la, okay? You cannot use a constructors inside, la, okay? If you want to write methods, so what you need to do is you need to actually become abstract. This is the difference, okay? This is more general, okay? More general. So let's look at what more general mean, okay? As you can see, right, when you read the abstract class, or you don't know what is this method doing, okay? This method, right, is like this. Public abstract boolean got bread, okay? You don't know what is the code doing, okay? Because the code, right, would later implemented in the child. Example, okay, in car, supposing we, we got break, right? Our car got break. So I would implement the got break code inside the car, okay? In the tank, for example, uh, in the tank, supposingly a tank don't have a break, uh, okay? Tank don't have a break. So I'm going to implement the got break function in the tank, okay? So the idea is like this. If you want to implement different code in the child, you know the code in the child is different from each other. Then you write the abstract in here no? depend whether you want it to be assessed if you want it to be assessed you use public law no? if you don't want it to be assessed for your own reminder no? then you use protected law no? if it's an abstract method no? okay you need to add the abstract keyword no? okay abstract keyword and then afterwards okay there are no curly bracket no? okay there are no curly bracket 
okay you need to add a semicolon just now i read wrong this one is supposed to be a sensor or getter any method lah, okay any method doesn't care it's a setter or mutator okay so long it's a method right you can write a uh, abstract lah, okay abstract and okay and if the car and tank have a similar function right okay if the car and tank share a similar code let me rename it lah. suppose me i have a print vehicle status so car i need to use this code lah, okay the car i need to print the vehicle status and inside the tank okay inside the tank i also need to use this method or function so in the tank if I also need to use this method okay what I can do is I group the code okay I group the code to the parent if the function is different okay the function is different but needed by both then you use the abstract okay can you see the difference by the way or oh, this is truly very useful you might not able to see this power yet in future you might able to see this power this is actually a feature okay this is a feature this thing oh, okay this thing is called as polymorphism ah, okay polymorphism it allow the class to override the method okay it allow the class to override the method supposing me if this is a game development ah, i use a vehicle data type right then i can call a got break like this okay okay while the game is not as right i declare a vehicle i don't know the user will pick a car or tank however i can use this variable okay i can use the vehicle vehicle is the parent now okay in this line now it's the code to get the vehicle picked by the player now okay i want to print whether this vehicle got break or not uh. so i just direct call vehicle dot of break oh. like this oh. this is the power of polymorphism oh. supposing me okay supposing me in in this line right in this line we have a code okay we have a code to get the vehicle choose by the player oh. okay supposing me if the player choose a car okay i can direct set it to this variable okay i can direct set it to these variables and then i direct print oh. i direct print whether the vehicles picked by the user got break or not this is the powerful part about polymorphism just roughly introduce to you uh, okay this is a polymorphism example this is quoted from your lecture slide now uh. some class right have duplicate functionality uh, okay some of the child class okay the child class have duplicate functionality this duplicate functionality or uh, or the method uh, or the sub module right can be removed uh, okay we remove the same function and then we group it to the super class uh, okay we group it to the parent now uh, okay we group it to the parent if the function is in the parent now uh, we call super dot method in super law but this one is a typo from your lecture slide uh, okay this is a typo from your lecture slide the super don't have the bracket uh, okay super doesn't have bracket i show you the example uh, inside this car class uh, okay inside this car class if i want to print the vehicle status this print vehicle status or uh, is from this vehicle okay it's from this vehicle uh, print vehicle status okay as you can see it's from the parent if i want to call the function from this parent right from our child what, what we should do is we add the super keyword okay no bracket uh, no bracket it's a typo if you use a bracket right it will show you error there is no bracket uh, okay no bracket just simply super dot print vehicle status uh, okay this print vehicle status uh, is from the vehicle class okay vehicle class let's roughly look at the car class uh. in the car class we got a class view as usual and then we got a constructor we got a alternate constructor and then we add more specific function belong to the car okay example in our car we can accelerate the speed then i write the extra method only required by the car okay so that add the function okay and then okay supposingly if my car can change driver okay but my tank cannot ah uh, my tank cannot change driver then i write the step driver function in this car class oh. uh, this one i already explained oh. i implement the got break okay this got break oh, is from the super uh, okay it's from the super here okay here is the abstract method when you want to draw a uml right there are different relationship okay different relationship the box you see in here is a individual class ah uh, okay it's actually a class this is a rod class this is a weather class this is a wheel class this is the engine class this is a driver class this is the passenger class but what makes them special what makes them distinct okay how do you know whether you need to use which line when you draw the uml that's the question let's look at the first line first okay let's look at the first line if you see a straight line uh, okay if you see a straight line this straight line right can have error uh, okay can have error example in this 
this condition, okay, in this condition, right, if you have a private class field, okay, if you have a private class field of rod R, okay, you have a private class field of rod, and the rod is communicated with the car, and the car is communicated with the rod, right, okay, we call this as association, okay, this relationship is called as association, uh. the two classes communicate with each other, okay, the two class is communicate with each other, and if this is a thick line, not a dotted R. If this is a thick line, right, we say the relationship is very strong, okay? The rod class use the car, okay? The car class use the rod also, okay? As you can see, uh, in the rod, right, here, remember we got a class field called as rod, okay? Rod. We use the function from the rod class now, okay? In this rod class, right, as you can see, in this rod class, so we have a car also. We have a car class field also, okay? This car class field, right, we use it for what? We also use the car method also. The rod class right got a rod class field, lah, okay? The rod class field. The rod class field right is calling the method of valid limit, okay? And then pass in like example, okay, some parameter for the purpose of evaluation. Lah. In our rod class, we also have the car, okay? We also have the car class field. In this situation, okay, in this situation, right, we get the method also. As you can see, in this situation, okay, the two class is communicating with each other. If these two class is communicating with each other, right, we will use a line, okay? We use a thick line because they are talking to each other. This is called as association. If you see this dotted line, uh, you are using this as a local variable only, okay? Local variable. For example, this weather, okay? Weather is a class, right? Weather, okay? In this scenario, if I use it as a local variable only, after I finish using it, it gets destroyed, okay? After you finish using it, it gets destroyed, okay? If I use it as local variable only, right? We say the relationship is relatively weak, lah, okay? Relatively weak. This is also a type of association but a weak type, okay? If the arrow is pointing to this direction, uh, okay? If the car arrow is pointing to this direction, uh, this means the car is using a weather, okay? As you can see inside this car class, we are using the weather, okay? Inside the car, we are using the weather, okay? This is just a simple code that I have written, uh, something to just to represent this UML, okay? So we declare a local variable, weather today is equal to new weather. If the road of the target speed is still valid, right? If the weather today or there is no rain, right? So we allow the user to drive at maximum speed. So this is the relationship. Right? Okay, if it's a local variable, then you use the dotted line. Let's look at what do this black diamond mean. Okay, this black diamond or meaning right, the relationship is so important. Okay, so important. Uh, okay, as you can see, all oh, this is the wheel class. Okay, wheel class. This is the engine class. Engine class. Okay, this relationship is so important. A car cannot operate without the wheel. Okay, the car cannot operate without the engine. Okay, so in this scenario, we want to use the black diamond to represent the relationship. Often, if the car cannot operate, without the wheel, if the car cannot operate without the engine, right? The car is responsible to the life cycle of the wheel and the car is responsible to the life cycle of the engine. What do I mean by life cycle? Life cycle meaning in the Java perspective, uh, in Java perspective, in your main, right? Your main, you use a car object, correct or not? When you don't want to use this variable anymore, right? Java will garbage collect it, clean the memory so other program can use the memory. So when you don't want to use the car class already, uh, this wheel, this engine will will get destroyed also, okay? Why do it get destroyed also? Eh? Because we are responsible for the life cycle. In our car class, okay? In our car class, right? Okay, we got an engine. Okay, we got a wheel also, uh, okay? By the way, this one is type of. Okay, I just remove this so that it's lined up, as you can see. If this wheel, uh, okay, if this wheel is created by the default constructor, right? And the wheel is created by the alternate constructor. When we don't want to use the car class anymore, when Java destroy the car object, uh, the Java garbage collect it. So the wheel also get destroyed uh, and the engine also get destroyed. Uh. Okay, if in this scenario, okay, in this scenario, uh, because when the car destroy, we also get destroyed, then we use the black diamond. Okay, we use the black diamond to represent the relationship. Uh, okay, the black diamond also is called as composition. Okay, composition. Uh. So this car class, right, is responsible uh, for the search engine, as you can see in here. Okay, now let's truly look at this empty diamond. Okay. This empty diamond ring, right? Aggregation, uh, okay, aggregation. You can see a private class field also. 
Okay, let's do it as set term. As you can see, oh, in your car class, uh, okay, in your car class, you have the method to set the driver. Okay, you pass the driver from another place. In the scenario, you pass the driver from another place, right? Then this driver is aggregation. The relationship is aggregation. This means, right, this object, right, is borrowing from someone now. Uh, okay, this object, okay, this object, or oh, we are borrowing from someone. Okay, let's go at the main example. Supposing we, I declare car my V is equal to new car. Then car BMW is equal to new car. Okay, the only difference is this one is using default constructor. This one is using alternate constructor. This part we don't have to look up. We just assume these are two different car. And then let's say we have a driver. Our driver variables is SpongeBob. Okay, in this scenario, I can set SpongeBob as the driver. When SpongeBob finish driving my V, right? SpongeBob can go and drive BMW also. Okay, if you are borrowing, right? Then that's mean, right? We are using the blank diamond. Okay, and also there is one characteristic, lah. Okay, after we finish using our my V, ah, example, if our my V is get garbage collected. However, SpongeBob doesn't get destroyed. Okay, the driver doesn't get destroyed. The driver can still drive it under the car. Okay, so this is the meaning, lah. Okay, it's not destroyed. So the driver can drive under the car. Passenger can also sit under the car. That's the meaning, lah. This thing is called as multiplicity. This one, right? A house has one or more door. Okay, if you put zero to add, right, that means all oh, a student can have zero units and can unlock up until eight units. You always look at the end. So if you start from the person, okay, if you start from the person, this means the the person can have on zero to many houses okay however a house right can only be owned by one or two people okay you don't need to label this don't need 